those who don't do teach right I mean I like to do things <laughs> who doesn't right um, I want to do the things that you know I, I like to do the things that I'm good at doing it's just you know a matter of timing and whatnot right having the opportunities to be able to do the things you want to do um but it's interesting the idea of some people want to do things but they can't right so the best thing they can do is at least if they can't do it at least help others to do it right and this is part of why you know i put out uh, my my deck ideas i've been in some scenarios where it's like i had a you know really good idea for a deck um you know for competitive play right i'm thinking of Yu Gi Oh right now but then but i couldn't go to any events um to be able to you know play the deck so, uh, by the time I would have had the opportunity to go to an event to play the deck, then the deck gets, you know, hit, right? Ban list and stuff like that tends to be a factor. So, that's, you know, like another layer of things, you know, getting in your way of doing things, right? Is you have a really good deck, you know, you've been play testing with it, and then it gets hit by the ban hammer. The infamous ban hammer, right? So that sucks so then you gotta be like okay now i gotta try something different or you try to do a substitution thing where you try to substitute cards in your deck right and try to find things that can let you do what the deck you know can do or was designed to do but it's less than than optimal right because the version you have was the most optimal version but now you gotta water it down just so it could still be uh, you know playable so it could potentially be as good as the original build but a lot of times it does it doesn't it doesn't work out you know the the watering down drastically reduces the viability of, of the of the deck and some people you know use the term you know killed right you know the decks got you know the decks dead so it's not as playable as it could have been now a lot of times that is true that it, that <laughs> some decks do lose the ability to be playable and good what made them really really good was certain key cards and when those key cards are not available then the deck is less good but a lot of times that's not the case there'll be times where it's like yeah, y'all like the deck in a certain build, in a certain way, and that's what was popular because y'all like that that specific build. But you didn't need those cards. The deck is, is still great even without those cards. Like the idea of like TPs and stuff like that, like specific promos or a specific ultimate or something. And people are like, oh yeah, this this deck is great because of this one ultimate. Like for example, a lot of decks. Let's say uh, um, so Zeno was was banned, right? Then a lot of decks that heavily relied on that card will essentially die because they heavily relied on it, even though the decks can still perform without it. And the decks should. Here's the most important part: the decks should be able to perform without it. Like, it'd be, <laughs> it's a bad idea to literally build a deck based off of one card. Like, you should at least have uh, substitutions, right? You should at least have other um, ways to win with the deck other than that one card uh, win con. Now, granted, there'll be times where I'll build a deck where literally it revolves around one specific uh, card as the win con. And if I don't succeed in using it, you know, to win the game, then, yeah losing is what's going to happen but that's what's known as a glass cannon uh, deck but if i choose to build the deck that way that's just, you know, I, just chose to build it. I could always obviously have backup uh, win cons right obviously 
where I could just play the deck in a, in a way that I can win even without the win con. You know, so that's always an option. But typically, when you build, you build something to play a certain way, you want it to work out that way. So that's why it's understandable that some people just give up on a deck once they no longer can play it in a specific build. But it's, you know, unfortunate because it's like the deck's still playable. You just can't play those specific cards. Play other cards. Be creative. Be open-minded. If anything, this is an opportunity for you to experiment, for you to try something different. You might realize that there's a better way to play the deck. But most people are just, you know, so stuck on doing things one way, thinking that that's the only way, that they don't see other possibilities. They don't see that there is better ways, you know? You know, like most recently, I've just been, I've been seeing, you know, different ways of playing the game, different, um, you know, different card choices. You know, as cards that before I didn't, you know, um, you know, I didn't see as useful, you know, because it's like, yeah, I don't really need this effect. You know, this is not my, this is not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to do this. Like, for example, cards that says, you know, your opponent discards one card or work one card from the hand. Like, to me, it's like, eh, if my opponent has 30 plus cards in their hands, right? Or even if my opponent just has like four cards in their hands, taking one is not going to do much, technically, right? Technically, you know, and the possibility, and the the, the fact that <laughs> just taking one card from my opponent's hand is not enough. That's what I'm trying to say, right? So it, so something like that would be like, eh, not, not a useful effect. Um, ironically, Andrew's 18 Bionic Blitz Super Combo does just that. Combo, boom, one card out of your opponent's hand. But the fact that you can play multiple copies of it in one, in one shot for free, right? You can, you know, kind of rebrand your opponent's hand. Or the fact that you could play and rebrand them, take out even more cards, or uh, do what which I'm gonna call it. The you can get the idea. It's like if you combine it with other cards, it is better. Which is why it's like okay, looking back at cards that says you know you know point at this card a card and whatnot, it's worth looking into. Again, you know revisiting those types of cards because of their potential viability now. Where it's like, okay, the idea is to reduce my opponent's hand size now. So that way it greatly increases the chances of me able to go for game. Especially, we have a lot of newer cards, right, that are really strong. Like 30k plus power. We got a couple 35k's we can easily cheat out. More more reason to want to play stuff, especially stuff for free, like Overrun. That's the main thing I was talking about, is play stuff that overruns that makes your opponent discard a card. That's a free, that's a free hand that we come discard right then throw rebrand on there that's two more cards right then throw in a the, the a bonnet the super combo that's another card so you can rip four cards off your opponent's hand for just two energy all right two energy commitment because every all the, other, the two other cards in that strategy were for free all right granted the way i said it <laughs> the whole overwhelm and stuff obviously you want to rebrand first then overrun. <laughs> if you do it the other way, obviously you will warp your uh, rebrand before you get to use it. So obviously you want to use her first, rip two cards, then overrun, rip a card, then attack, super combo, rip another card. Obviously that'd be the right the right line of play for that. But you get my point is you could rip potentially four cards out your opponent's out your opponent's hand, which can turn an eight card hand to a four card hand, right? So the chances of your attack going through is a lot higher, especially if your attack is, you know at least minimum 20k but you ideally want it to be 30k and there is a 30k um free overrealm um card you could play i mean there are a couple overrealm cards where you could pay one energy um that are 30k plus you could try to take advantage of um so you know that kind of stuff so it's like you know you you're always looking for different ways to play the game most people, you know, still stuck on the old way of, you know, drawing more cards than their opponent and having a bigger hand size as their way of, you know, um, overcoming their opponent's ability to, um, um, you know, out-combo their attacks, which is not a, you know, wrong 
strategy, you know what I'm saying? It's a little outdated. Um, and it's, it's pretty basic. I'm just trying to say it's basic. It's mid, right? It's like, yeah, it's a generic way of winning the game is having a larger hand size than your opponent. Um, just by trying to draw a lot. Nothing against it, just saying that, you know, it's not the only way you can go about uh, winning, is all I'm trying to say. I'm not trying to say I'm against drawing a whole bunch of cards, uh, you know. I'm just saying that there are other ways you could um, you go, you know, play the game. So the other ways will be obviously reducing your opponent's hand size. So that's why I'm a fan of stuff that does reduce my opponent's hand size. I would prefer it to do two cards at a time, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers, as they say. More reason why is, like, I'm looking at stuff that uh, can rip at least one card, right? And hopefully I could play multiple copies of cards, right? Play multiple cards that can rip, you know, a card, a card, at least, you know, one card, obviously, per, per each each thing I'm playing, so that way it drastically reduces my opponent's hand size. So that way, when I attack and they do, uh, you know, out combo my attacks, that further reduces their hand size. This is why I saw stuff like, um, what is it, Bardic Unison, the Greek two drop green unison, um, Fraternal Bomb, where he, he has the effect that we call combo kill. There's a combo killer effect where when your opponent combos, you activate the auto and send the, the, the card that's in the combo area to the drop and combo kill, right? That will, f that will force your opponent to have to combo again because, you know, they're not getting the boost from the card they combo because you got rid of it. So now they got to play another card to replace it. And if, they, and if they plan to combo even more than just one card, then they got to play more cards, right? So you can put just off of just off of triggering the auto once, you're already forcing your opponent to have to give up three cards from their hands instead of two. Because the first one, that was a waste of a, of a card because you literally combo killed it, right? So right there, you just ripped one card out of your opponent's hand. Now they got to use two more cards so that they can get their, let's say their attack power up to, you know, ten, you know, giving their, their card the extra 10K boost that we're trying to give themselves. So you made them waste about 15K worth of combo power just to only get 10k out of it so three cards were lost when the opponent was willing to only give up two originally but you forced them to have to give up one extra so so it becomes you know hand control essentially in that in that regards now some people uh might not have would not have looked at it that way even even a card that um Defensively, there's some old cards that when you combo with them, they let you bounce a combo, a card in the combo area from your opponent's combo area to their hand, which could be a really good battle trick to reduce your opponent's uh, power of what they're attacking with, right? <clears throat> By doing that. That way, they wasted all these cards for nothing. You use less cards. For example, using a card, it was a Jocko card back in the day I used to play with combo it and I would hit like a super combo that way it, my opponent's power would drastically be reduced by 10k so I would just by comboing that one card you know w would give me the ability to out combo the attack and of course my opponent you know more likely wasted you know a lot of combo power so a lot of cards on the hand so I would take advantage of the fact that they have a smaller hand size because of that that's a nice little you know battle trick little, little, little things like that makes a huge difference depending on how you play them and, and how you synergize them with other things so this is the kind of stuff that i you know take into account and i experiment like i said experiment try try things you know if an effect looks interesting and it looks different especially if it's a different effect i'm like you know it's like hmm this card says like for example, if a card says your opponent draws two cards, it's like, okay, why am I playing a battle card that lets my opponent draw two cards? That doesn't sound good, right? At first, it doesn't sound good. But if your whole strategy is to mill your opponent out, then it's actually a pretty good card. Um, let's say you can, let's say there's a battle card that says if your opponent's hand size is eight or greater, has eight your opponent has eight or more cards in their hands they can't out combo this attack or something like that 
right so then having a card that makes them draw two cards would be a good you know a good card to have it's like oh now i have use for that card that card is useful in this scenario in this strategy so that's why i was talking about the whole idea of like a card that says warp a battle card for your opponent's hand or something like that it's like wait that's all it does that's the only effect it has is just my opponent discards a card or warps or whatever that doesn't seem great yeah by itself agreed by itself it doesn't seem that great but in combination with other cards it is great it is it is the missing piece to your you know to your masterpiece right your your your, your you know your win con right which is your grand plan right your grand scheme is missing that one one integral piece and that, and that ma it makes a huge difference that's why it's understandable if some people you know doesn't don't want to play a certain deck when they're missing a, a specific piece specific card it's like yeah i'm not gonna play my my sin shinron deck if i can't have my uh cell zeno right but in case hypothetically zeno was banned then somebody who plays uh the yellow sin might be like you know what? i'm not gonna play the deck no more just because i don't have that one card even though the deck b doesn't really need it it obviously it's an awesome um ultimate to play in the deck but it but it, it, it the deck is good without it you know the deck still has the tap six and summon a whole bunch of you know uh shadow dragons you know up to seven to end your opponent out you know I have a black and yellow Sin Shinron deck. Basically, I just call it 30k because it has a shitload of 30k uh, Shadow Dragons in the deck. And, you know, pay 6 and bring them all back. And swing 30k, triple strike, double strike, here and there, right? Just swing, swing, swing. For a whole lot of power, right? Go go tall and wide at the same time. Um, there's some effects where it's like, oh, tap energy to power up a card. At first, it, it might seem like... It might seem good at first like oh that seems good well i can make it you know for two energy i can make it a, a, a 50k double strike oh that's decent but you know it's like ah, not too big of a deal you know it's like oh i gotta pay like maybe two energy to play the card so it's a four energy commitment and blah 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 so there's like a lot of factors you know there's a lot of you could you can start thinking of a lot of the cons of like why it's not good at first it looks good but then you start you know overthinking right you start thinking like uh nah i don't think it'll be that good i'd rather play this that there so you'll you'll find other stuff and there might be other stuff that are better technically like you rather play mirror creator absorb right which is a one energy commitment to get a really strong uh attacker and then just drop champa on it right and have a really you know a 60k uh 80k 100k double strike attacker right you rather go that route and i don't disagree with that but let's say mirror clear absorber gets banned then you don't have that option anymore so then it would be a good idea to reconsider that old card where it costed more energy to play but it would give you the same um, outcome right or at least a similar outcome which you'll have a really tall battle card that you can, you know, that you can add double strike to, right? Just like when uh, fighting against fate, you know, it getting banned. And other people start looking at other cards as viable options to replace it. It's like, yeah, as a player, especially a competitive player, right? That's the kind of stuff you want to do. You want to look at other options. You want to look at other things that you could potentially use. Sometimes it's not just that um, you don't have access to the, you know, better card that you'll, you know, you'll call it that, right? You'll say that the card is better. Sometimes you need something different for the sake of difference. And for example, somebody pointed out to me in one of my decks um, why I'm not using uh, like Man on a Mission or some other card. I forgot what, what they said. And um, I pointed out, oh yeah, it was like Toa. It was the, like the three drop Toa um, that powers up the leader as well as rips a card from my opponent's hand. And I pointed out to my opponent is, th is that Toa, you know, is Demon Realm, like so something like that, right? She's like Demon Realm, some shit, so, something like that. Um, and um, the, the mirror 
uh, relentless or some shit like that. Destruction, relentless or something like that. Relentless destruction, I think it is. Anyway, the mirror, which is similar to the Toa, is an android. Because this was in my cell deck. So it's an android. Both have similar effects. The main thing is you over roam for three. Your opponent, you know, pitches a card. Or warps a card. One of the two. Um, I think it's warp. I think mirror specifically warps. I think Toa is the one that makes your opponent um, drop. If they both warp, either way, it doesn't matter. The point is, your opponent is going to have to give up a card. That's the whole point. The difference between the Mira and the Toa is the Mira is Android. So Mira has synergy with my leader's ability. Because if I need to put a Android under the leader so I can draw two cards or just to to awaken, then uh, Mira will be will be more optimal. A lot of the test hands I did, I noticed I would get multiple copies of the Mira, and sometimes I would need the mirror to help me awaken or just to or just to help me draw because i only need one mirror for like my you know for my uh win con right for my combo for when i drop you know uh perfect force cell and, uh, obviously but um just so i can rip an, a, another card out of my opponent's hand so my opponent has one less card in the hand so they have like two maybe you know if i turn uh, if i uh, Bonic Blitz, right? Super combo and rip another card. Then my opponent only has one card in the hand, and that greatly increases my uh, my chances of my you know double strike cell going through, right, and winning me the game. Um, definitely don't want a baby hatch egg scenario. Because if my opponent has two cards in their in their hands, a hatch egg can pop out of nowhere, and I've experienced that before. So, uh. <laughs> I need to make sure my opponent has just one card in the hand. Ironically, it could be a spark in the game, a barrier blocker. <laughs> uh, but at least they're in a position where they have to lose life. Um, in order to, to, if they have two cards in their hands, that's, that's, that's two cards too many is what I'm trying to say. My point has to be at least at one card or no, or no cards um, for, me to, for me to be happy. Because if they have two cards, shit, that could be a freaking uh, 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 hatch yak. Especially if I'm playing against blue, obviously, right? But um, yeah. So it's like that. That's that's the reason. It's like yeah, Toa is not bad. I I, I like the idea. Um, ironically, I do have Toa, um, in uh, Raditz, because Raditz is a green leader. So obviously, I could power up Raditz, and Raditz, um, when it attacks, it warp a card from a opponent's hand. So I could rip a card from a opponent's hand, plus get Raditz up to 20k. Um, in the process, so a 20k swing at my opponent is, you know, a leader is always good. That means they need at least 10k combo power to out combo it. And, uh, you know, Toa ripping another card out of my opponent's hand, so that's two cards out of my opponent's hand. Um, but that's for the, uh, what is it called? The chain attack trunks, um, uh, Zeno combo. So my opponent would have five cards in hands, and the idea is to use the leader and Toa to rip two cards out their hands. And then swing with the leader and Toa, trying to hopefully get more cards out their hands. And then just like, you know, finish them off with, uh, um, you know, Zeno and whatever else I might I might be able to get out on the, on the field for free. Like a Nappa super combo or something. And just swing for game and just combo my hand into the attack. And just finish my opponent off. That kind of stuff. You get it. So... That, so in that deck, since I don't need an, the Android typing, yes, Toa is obviously a, a, a better choice. And I own both cards, so they're interchangeable. So whichever one I need the most, you know, is the one I use. But that's why I was using Mira instead of Toa, because Toa will power up my cell leader, obviously. But um, it, she's not an Android. If she was an Android, then yes, she would have she would have been the number one draft pick for that 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 situation. Um, but the other thing was is that uh, if 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 I really wanted to, I would rather I would rather use the thirty the thirty k. Um, the was it it's Super Saiyan Four Vegeta, Fane Greetings or something like that. Um, it's a thirty k oh, free you know oh, uh, six over on six. It's a thirty k over on six. I don't have to pay no energy, so it's just free over on six, right? 30k and my opponent has to warp a card from the hand and it's twice as powerful than you know mira and um toa 
so that would be a better thing to swing with so it, it being a 30k my opponent hand size being small it would be a better 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 choice but there's no 100% guarantee uh, typically for me to have six cards in the drop unless I'm using like burst effects or something like that so the likelihood of me having six cards for that is slim I am more likely to have three cards in a drop um, than I am to have six cards in a drop. So that's one of the things I'm taking into account. I would rather have the 30k, no doubt, but I might not be able to guarantee I have the six cards in a drop to play. So then that'd be kind of productive not, not being able to play something. I don't want to be in a position where I can't play a card just because I'm one card or two or three cards short of playing it so that's why i'm going with the 15k over realms right because they're over on three i mean ideally i would like a 20k that's like over on three or four right i could work with that um which is why in some builds like in some decks where i'm doing the whole chain zeno strategy i'm using awakened weird water which is over on four for free right i don't pay no energy um because he is 20k in double strike so i'm like instead of trying to rip more cards out of my opponent's hand i'm just trying to increase the damage output so if my opponent doesn't want to take two damage right then they have to out they have to try to out combo the attack which is 10k combo power to try to out combo the attack if i don't combo to get it up to a 30k and that's the other thing is the fact that i can turn it into a 30k double strike if i throw in a super combo right or two 5ks so i could potentially turn them into a 30k double strike which is better than, you know, um, the, the 30k over on 6 uh, Vegeta. <coughs> and these are the types of things you have to think about, right? Think about the, you know, how a card would be useful, you know, in those situations. So you always want to play out those, your win condition, right? You always want to play out the strategy that, you know, the, 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 the situation you you're, you're, you want to be in or the situation you don't want to be in you always want to make not only do you want to know what what's the best what's the best out um, the best situation for you to win the game you also have to think about the worst situation to be in that could cause you to lose you want to think about how to win with your deck right but you also want to think about how how you can lose with your deck right how your opponent can beat your deck is what i'm trying to say so try to figure out what's the strength and weaknesses of your strategy right your win con and then obviously try to minimize your weakness most people don't do that i know that most people don't do that most people just you know good cards good cards you know stuff the deck's full of good cards and then you know just hope that those you know the cards being good is all that they need in order to to win out to win matches and to some degree that could turn out that way you know good cards are good cards for a reason right but that's not always guaranteed a lot of times it's not what you play is how you play it that determines if you win or lose you know uh, when i was playing uh, my um set two some also turning tide deck you know one of the issues i was having at first was trying to get them out as soon as possible <clears throat> At first, I was trying to get him out on turn, turn seven, and that's not good. Competitively, it's not good to wait until turn seven to try to win the game, right? That's too long. It takes way too long, and, you know, slow play, you know, um, is a thing that can happen in competitive scene. So, obviously, a turn seven strategy is not optimal for competitive play. So, you want something that's faster. So, then I try to speed up the deck by adding some ramp into it to get so i can play turn ties you know sooner and then i started playing it playing it more so i was able to you know play it for seven play it for seven i was able to play it sooner than later but there was some in uh situations where my opponent would had a had a had something they can use as a response to me playing turn ties even though he has deflect they were able to play some stuff that help them you know um stay in the game longer you know unisons especially unisons that are blockers or unisons that have effects like autos like the boo unison for example with its minus one ability to bottom deck my uh turning the tides 
that's a problem <laughs> plus it's a blocker so it's not only does it has that minus three i mean minus one ability it's also a blocker so it already is a defense against turning the tide um the ability to counterplay a blocker into play being able to play a blocker from your hand when i drop turning ties that's another thing that can um, benefit you um against turning the ties so little things like that is stuff you gotta you gotta you gotta think about and it's like oh there are things people can do um in response to my turn tide even something as simple as dropping charismatic villain frieza right when your opponent plays turning the tide and of course you can't hit turning the tide um no oh, well i said it wrong uh you obviously can right you can hit it with uh charismatic villain frieza because it is a seven drop or less and you know you're you're hitting it with your auto so something like that like oh you could play charismatic villain frieza and hit them right um oh this is what i want to say you can't god seal uh turning the tires but you can however still play god sealing trunks just to get god sealing trunks in play that's what i was trying to say not 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 uh not Frieza, it was a, a Gossip Trunks. Get them in play so you can use them to combo to defend your leader. Because remember, once your hand is gone, you can't, uh, you know, you can't combo, right? Because um, you have no cards in your hands. But if you have a battle card in play, you can combo that come in handy. Now, that won't help you against uh, turning ties himself swinging, right? But I will help you against like a, a leader or a unison swing um, from hitting you and that that can make the difference between you winning or losing against turning the tide just you know putting that out there um but you know small little things like that so that's how you'll try to defend against turning the tide but that's how your opponent could try to defend against turning the tides and since you want to win with turning the tides you don't want them to be able to do that so you want to keep that in mind you don't want to keep those small details in mind um how you know since you don't have barrier you know charismatic and frieza uh a boo unison and the list goes on there's a couple of stuff you know that could be your opponent could use to beat turn ties so turn ties is great uh, but if your opponent has has a way to deal with it then they have a way to deal with it and you got to know what those things are and try to uh, uh, prevent them or play around them or you know can't do nothing about it <laughs> but just you know accept the, accept the fate like, because even though if your opponent has a way to deal with your turning ties after you play it, it's still worth playing it because of his auto, auto will still go through, right? You're playing them mainly for his auto, right? To clear your opponent's hand. So, play him even if they're, if they're going to get rid of him. Play him anyway, right? And just go from there. Make the most out, out of the situation. That's why having something extra like an overrealm or something like that, where you play the overrealm first, then play turning tides. So if they do have an answer for turning the tides, right, you already played something else that can replace them. Like, a, like, a, what you might call it. Like, for example, if I play my, because I play man on a mission. So if I play man on a mission, my opponent uh, hits it with Karis Miller, Villain Frieza, or even um, Guy Sealing Trunks. Oh, well, cool. You know. You use those cards, good for you. Now turning size, right? So, you know, they set them, you know, they set themselves up um, anyway, right? So if they waste uh Kesner and Frieza on my turn on my uh man on a mission, you know, turning ties will come through, right? And then of course they can't play other counter plays after that, so that's another thing to keep in mind. So once they freeze up once, they can't freeze again, so then you know you can turn the tides. So stuff like that matters. That's why it's like playing stuff. Just even playing something that overruns and makes them rip a card from the hand, and maybe they they be like, you know what? I'm going to uh, freeze that because I don't want that to stay in play. And yeah, I'll lose a card from my hand. All right, two cards just got taken out the hand, and then you turn the tides, right? And they're like, ah oh, shit. You know, I should have I should have waited. You know, should have. You know but that kind of stuff um but yeah um i think i talked long enough um and i'll just end it right there